Shall I paint roses around the door? Or clematis? Oh, I have a feeling I've gone wrong. Ah, there it is. Oh, dear. A good 20 rows back. Well, I don't know why you keep on with it. You'll have nowhere to store them soon. I still have the two drawers at the bottom of Mother's wardrobe. I wish you wouldn't call it that. What's wrong with the old walnut? It always was the old walnut. It's the word mother that irks you. You go pale whenever it's mentioned. You want to be careful you don't pull out 21 rows. Mother. Oh. <laughs> there, you have gone white, you have, Kenneth. Your face blends beautifully with that doll's house. Oh, damn! Now look what you've you made me do. You paint on the carpet. Grace, please. You've been on the edge of a row all day. Smudging paint on the window. Poor dollies won't be able to see out now. Da-da-da! Uh-oh. Oh, no. Not again. Not now. Not here. Oh, Christ. I can't see a bloody thing. Right, right. Now, how to get across to the hard shoulder. All right! All right! Hazard lights. Hazard lights. Where's the damn switch? No. Now, let's see if these bastards will let me in. Can you believe it? Can't you see I'm in trouble? Calm down, Sarah. Calm down. Now, after this, Laurie. Now. This is a nightmare. Just go. Go. That knitting's disappearing by the minute. I don't know why you didn't find something more useful to do. Boy, we'll have grown out of it by the time you finish the thing. Why you had to buy such a large doll's house, I can't imagine. It was cheap. Where will you keep it once you've decorated the thing? That's what I'd like to know. You couldn't squeeze another toy into the shed. And you know why we can't put anything else in the long barn? We shan't get many more cars in there. And you know what the rules are. No spilling into the guest rooms. The back room hardly gets used now. Rules, Kenneth, rules. Besides, the granddaughter will be too old for dolls' houses. Would she? Fetch the chart. I'll make a cuppa. Then we can go over it. I think you'll find I'm right. Uh. 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 She knows this chart like the back of her hand. Well? Oh. <coughs> I wish you wouldn't do that. I wouldn't have put the hatchway there if I thought you were going to stick your head through it every five minutes. Why not admit you're wrong? I shan't rub it in. Promise. There's a 12-year-old here. With boy written in brackets. In your handwriting. I might well have written girl in there. But it wasn't your turn, Daddy. If my memory serves me right, the first was a joint decision and we both agreed on a girl. And I clearly remember we had her down as a young teenager. And I think at that age, girls would rather be playing with boys, not dolls. Hmm? <sighs> bit of company in this isolated place would be kingdom come. No one to disturb lovers here. Oh, please, Rain, please, stop. Uh-oh. Someone's coming to help you. Thank God for central locking. Trouble? Yes, windscreen wipers packed up, but I've phoned for help, thank you. Be here any minute. Ah. I, I can't run you anywhere. I have to wait here. They'll be here any minute now. Right. Well, uh, good luck. Why is he staying there? Why doesn't he drive off? He's waiting. He could tell I was lying. Oh. <sighs> Going. I don't fancy driving in this, but neither do I cherish the idea of playing sitting duck for some crazy lunatic. You're quiet. I was thinking about my mother again. I was wondering why we let her make us do something we would live to regret. She was a powerful woman, and I was weak. You were young. I suppose that's why I went wrong. 
those 20 rows back. I don't think about Mother without thinking about our baby. And my mind was full of her. I can't think why. It's nearly 10 o'clock. Oh, someone broken down. That's what it'll be. Tell them we're full. I'll say the wind must have blown the sign round. Yes, that's it. They're not to know. Oh. But what if it's someone... Uh... Oh, it's bound to be a family wanting to break their journey because of the storm. I don't want strangers in tonight, Kenneth. I've got a headache. Oh, well, then, uh, I shan't let them in. Turning up at this hour. It's not fair. I'm sorry to... I'm sure other bed and breakfast establishments would do the same. Yes. Ten o'clock. Another ten minutes, we might have been in bed. The lady's car broke down on the motorway, Mummy. Oh. It, it was the windscreen wipers, actually. Just the windscreen wipers. I couldn't see a thing. Almost caused the most dreadful accident. I kept pulling over onto the hard shoulder. Three times I stopped, but it, it got so bad. And, and then once it eased, I'd set off again, but no sooner had I gone a mile or so, and down it came again. I, I just couldn't sit there any longer. It was so dark. And I, uh, I, I knew there was a bed and breakfast along this lane. So I, I do hope that you have a vacancy. I, I feel... <laughs> Quite drained. Oh, we must get you out of those wet clothes. You'll catch your death. You're in luck. We've no one in this evening. <laughs> We're usually quite full. Oh, <laughs> must be my lucky night. I'm sure Mummy will find you something. To of wear. course she will. Now you come with me. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You've been very kind. <laughs> oh, now, there's a strange thing. We haven't had that chart out for months. Given her that nice red dressing gown. Could have been made for her. Did you notice her eyes, Daddy? She's got... I know, I know. Blue eyes. I was going to say blue, that but... certain bewildered, starry look. It's the same colour, that's all. We mustn't ask too many questions. Oh, Lord, no. Mustn't do that. Ah. Oh, now, that does look nice. It's brand new. I hope it's not somebody's present. I think it's time we all had a nice hot drink. Uh, and some food, Mummy. I'm sure, um... Sarah. Sarah. Must be quite ravenous. Oh, no, no, please, don't don't trouble. It's much too late to start messing round in the kitchen. Hot soup. That should bring some colour back into those cheeks. Uh, come and sit by the fire, Sarah. I think I should phone the police, tell them why I left my car on the hard shoulder. First things first. You've had a bit of a shock one way or another. We don't want to make Mummy cross. <laughs> yeah. now, then. now, why don't you tell me about yourself, hmm? What were you doing, driving all alone, by yourself, on a night like this? Well, I've been staying in London for a few days, hunting. I'm an antique dealer. Oh, well, now that is a coincidence. Uh, Grandmother, she, she did a bit of wheeling and dealing. She used to have her own curiosity shop years back. That's why this place is so full of this stuff. That garage is laden with what are now classified as antiques. I'll see if I can twist Mummy's arm. See if we can't get her to let you have a good rummage in the morning. You were thinking of selling some of it, then? To be perfectly honest, I'd be glad to see the back of that stuff. And I could do with the space. Uh, of course, if they're very special antiques, I might not be able to afford the... Oh, oh, no, 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 don't talk about money. It's probably a load of old junk. Oh, I'd have to pay a fair price. I couldn't possibly live with myself if I felt I'd cheated you. Oh, well, uh, just a few pounds then to show goodwill. As I say, it's nothing more than a heap of antiquities. Some of that furniture looks as if it's come out of the ark. <laughs> I expect you'll find a few bits and bobs. <laughs> yes, I'm sure I will. Some nice hot mushroom soup. That's what she needs. Daddy, it's rude to spy. I'm observing... That is why I made this hatchway, if you remember. Oh, she's very pretty. I should think her children would be most attractive. Did she mention? No, but she's got that look of a mother. The funny thing is, she doesn't seem that concerned about phoning home. You'd think she'd want to. There's something very sad about that young lady. I find it quite remarkable, her turning up like this, right out of the blue. And almost the very next day... 
But last night I almost begged him not to send any more disappointments. And afterwards, when I had said all I had to say, I felt lighter inside. In here, a kind of warm glow. You all have to get busy on that doll's house. Oh, we've changed our mind about that, have we? <laughs> oh, it's only a chart, Daddy. <laughs> It might well have been an omen. You remember our list of names? Yeah. Names we would have called her if Mother hadn't been so hard. You recall which one was our favourite? Yes. I must say that did shake me up a bit. That's right, Sarah. You warm yourself by the fire. I'm sorry to have taken so long. I expect you must be tired after your long journey. Now, if you would like to sit in that armchair, I think you'll find this tray will fit very nicely on your lap. I am a bit worried about my husband. He would be expecting me home by now. Um, if I could use the phone. Oh, well, I know what this will mean. You know what men are like. You'll want to arrange things with your car tonight, and and we've just settled ourselves to your staying. And you won't get a chance to go through those things in the garage. I could always come back another day. Once I get an idea in my head... There's no shifting it. Well, I'm desperate for space. I intend to be moving that stuff out of there within the next couple of days. Oh, I could always phone the local dealers. Well, I suppose I could always... I could always tell him about your garage, tell him I needed a bit more time. Not mention the car on the hard shoulder? Now you're talking. The phone's in the hall. Turn left out of the door and keep walking till it hits you in the face. You must let me pay you for the call. <laughs> oh. oh, you can always tell an honest face when you see one. Laura? Oh, thank goodness you're in. Listen, I want you to do me a favour. I've tried to get hold of Rod, but he's not back yet. Will you keep ringing until you get him and say I shan't be back tonight? Not for a couple of days. <laughs> oh, no, this is my find, and what a find. Can you believe? A dotty old couple with a garage crammed full of antiques they want to get rid of. Or should I say, old junk, as they put it. <laughs> no way! Find your own! <laughs> No, no, that will not be necessary. No address, no phone number, no clues. Don't worry, I'll share some of it with you. Does your husband often let you travel about by yourself, Sarah? I don't want you to think I'm interfering, but it seems a bit uh, irresponsible. Oh, I do it all the time. Go all over the country. Sounds like you've spent most of your life looking for something. Or someone. Yes, I have. Antiques, though, not people. I don't like it, Sarah. It worries me. Mm. All this toing and froing on lonely roads. Anything could happen to you out there. Anything. <laughs> well, maybe I'm like the cat with nine lives. Nothing deadly has happened so far. Tango 5 Alpha to control receiving over. Hi, Bob. Car parked on the hard shoulder, Sarge. Request registration check on Charlie 2 1, uniform Victor X ray. What makes you think I've got children? I prefer animals. I've got uh, three cats and a dog. I see you're knitting something for a child. I expect your father must be disappointed. No grandchildren? Oh, I'm one of three. My parents are quite content. Five grandchildren. It comes very expensive at Christmas. But why didn't you have children, Sarah? Does it matter? Daddy? Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. It's none of my business. It's, it's just that... Well, you look like a good child, Mary. <laughs> Do I? I knew a woman once. She had eight. Not her own, of course, no. She was barren, as I remember it. Used to foster and sometimes adopt. Sarah didn't say anything about that. It's not the sort of thing one likes to talk about. An adopted child doesn't always want other people to know. I would, of course. I certainly would. Actually, it's strange you should say that. As a matter of fact, my parents did adopt me. My mother and father were killed in a car crash. That's what they told you? Well, I've seen the grave. I gave birth once. Looking at you, Sarah, I would say it was about the time that you were born. I notice you say once. <laughs> once was enough, obviously. <laughs> I'll put the electric blankets on. Oh, 
Something tells me I just said the wrong thing. It was a bit thoughtless, but there you weren't to know. <laughs> we couldn't keep the baby, of course, and it never happened again. No particular reason. Nothing medically wrong, that is. Oh, I see. We always knew that our little girl would seek us out. We knew that one day she'd knock on that door. It's been a long, painful wait, Sarah. Mummy had almost given up. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not with you. We have let a few others use your room. We weren't to know they were imposters. I did it up myself, all in pink. And you mustn't let the bars on the window worry you. We can easily have them removed. Now, look. Look, let, let's, let's not get carried away. I took the key, but she can be cunning, had spares. There's no real harm in it. And once she feels confident that you won't leave us again, I'm sure I'll get round her to leave the bedroom door alone. We've got everything here that you want. There's no need for you to go out for days. And it'll take you days to go through that garage, I can tell you. Look, I'm sorry, but, but I think... it's all you... over now. You're here. And that's all that matters. I've seen my adoption papers. Oh, they're devious. Go to any length. You mustn't be taken in by the authorities. The most important point is we found each other at last. At first, the way we read it, Mummy and me, there were two reasons why you'd turned up on our doorstep this evening, and now I'm almost certain Mummy's instincts were right. There was that dreadful storm, of course. Almost impossible, I would have thought, driving in treacherous weather without the aid of windscreen wipers. But no, that's not why you knocked on our door. I know that now. I... I... I don't want to seem ungrateful. You've made me feel very, very welcome. But I, I do feel bad fibbing to my husband the way I did. And my car, it shouldn't be on the hard shoulder. That's illegal. And the storm's passed now, so I think... But that's not to say the sky won't open up again once you're on that motorway. Even so, I think I'd prefer to take that risk. Uh, I'll just go and have a word with Mummy... See what she's got to say. I don't believe this. You mustn't let locked doors worry you. It's just a precaution. We shan't keep you very long. There's some magazines on the sideboard. You'll find some very good articles in there. They're not just dotty. They're stark raving mad. The pair of them. Will you please open this door? Open this door! How dare you lock me in like this? How dare you! Having tantrums isn't going to get us anywhere now, is it? Mummy and I are having a very important discussion. But please, please open it. I want to get back into my clothes. Your clothes are soaking wet. We don't want you to catch pneumonia. I don't know why you're making all this fuss. You're dry, warm and perfectly safe with us for the moment. I want to go home. That's better. She's calming down now, Mummy. Tantrums are best left to spoil children. You must think us terribly rude locking you in like that. We've been having a little chat in the Ooh. kitchen and we decided to, well, to bring things to a head. We can't beat about the bush anymore. We're not used to late nights. You're coming here out of the blue like that and in such weather... People don't cruise about in heavy storms, Sarah. Not unless they've got a purpose. Look, I've told you. I was on my way now back. Now hear me out, please. You've got Mummy's eyes. And your bone structure, Daddy. I know you must be finding it difficult explaining yourself. It's taken you a long time to get round to looking for us, Sarah, but we feel sure you must have had your reasons. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're talking about. Sarah. We're a disappointment to her, Daddy. That's what it is. She came and she didn't like what she saw. How can you sit there and deny your own mummy and daddy? It's well past our bedtime. Look, I'm very sorry if I'm not who you want me to be, but that's the way it is. Now, I would like to phone my husband. I shall ask him to pick me up. Oh, no. Oh, dear me, no. We can't have that. Mummy's put your electric blanket on. We can't let you go just like that, as if you'd never been. I want to go home tonight. We'd like to explain the way it was. 
We didn't want to give you no. up. It was forced upon us. We've regretted it ever since. You've got to stop blaming Sarah. It's not fair on Mummy. I am not your daughter. I can't accept that. I'm sorry. Temper, Daddy, temper. You mustn't do this to him, Sarah. He gets terrible blood pressure and it does nothing for his bad streak. Look, let's, let's, let's be sensible about this. I, I would love it if you were my parents. I'm sure you'd both make wonderful... But I am not who you want me to be. And I will not pretend. My name is Sarah Brown. I look exactly like my own mother. I've seen her photographs. Now, your daughter is out there somewhere, but I, I am nothing to do with you. And you have no right to keep me here. I will not stay. Now, why don't we stop all this bickering? Drink our cocoa before it gets cold. I don't want any, thank you. I would rather use the phone. Don't want your cocoa? After Mummy stayed up late to make it? All right. All right. I'll drink my cocoa like a good girl. But then... It's I'm... all been a terrible misunderstanding. Another silly mistake. You're right, Mummy. Hmm? But then... You nearly always are. Ah, oh, delicious. You can't beat proper cocoa, Sarah. It takes a little more time, but it's worth it. Do you know what would be nice, Daddy? Some music. Oh, yes, that would be soothing. Mm. One of our favourites. Why not? This should do nicely. We're very proud of our collection, Sarah. If only we could have played you more than one tune, but it's too late now. The, oh, I do love this. <laughs> would the lady like to dance? Oh, she would, she would. <laughs> dee dee. <laughs> we used to be top of the league, you know, before we married. <laughs> Sometimes we would simply dance our way through the night, young and in love. Her grace was the envy of all, Sarah. Kenneth stood taller than all the men. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I would really like to get dressed now. <laughs> You're forgetting how wet your clothes were. Oh, God. Oh, I, I, feel, I feel so heavy. It's working very fast, Grace. I've got it down to a fine art now. You won't feel any pain. Grace has years of experience behind her. You'll just feel numb, that's all. You won't even know about the shaking. We made a few mistakes at first. One young lady had a terrible fit, broke a light bulb. She made it all very difficult. Please, please, please. Uh, Help me. It's not as if we asked you to come here. Uh, None of you. It's not as if we went out searching. We kept our promise. Now, don't go upsetting yourself, Grace. Well, She's been a brick, Sarah. A real brick. And we've had some tricksters here, I can tell you. Suggesting, insinuating, and all the time knowing they bore no relation to us whatsoever. And after we'd told them things, things that are very personal... Mm. I'm afraid I lost my temper with the first one. Uh, I hit her across the mouth for upsetting Grace with her cruel words. She caught her head on the fender. Uh, you mustn't blame yourself, Kenneth. She had no regard for his bad streak. We decided on Coco after that. I don't think she's listening, Kenneth. Well, they do say the hearing's the last to go. We'll put you in the wheelbarrow, Sarah, with pillows and an eider down. We want you to be comfortable and we'll wait for the last breath before we let you slip down into your watery grave. Oh, fetch the wheelbarrow, Kenneth. She's going quicker than the others. Oh, it must have been the music. You won't be alone down there, Sarah. We think there are four others in the well. We've got through bags of lime. Four or five, we can't quite remember. We wouldn't have given our baby away, you know. We had planned to run away to Gretna Green. But Mother acted quicker than we could think. She sent me away to the country. To a home. 
when it was all over and I came back, she tried to keep Kenneth away from me. But she couldn't. We had gained strength. She wouldn't come to the wedding. None of my family came to the wedding. They turned their backs on us, Sarah. And I haven't seen any of them since. We're putting you in it now, Sarah. But you must help us to help you. Get her other arm, Grace. Yes, that's yes. it. Try, try to pull yourself up. Oh, if she starts to shake before we've got her in there, Kenneth. Use your legs, Sarah. Good. Good girl. Now then, up. Oh. Help me ease this eider down, Grace. It can't be comfortable like that. That's better. You couldn't wish for a better end, Sarah. Tango 5, Alpha to Control, receiving over. Receiving back, go ahead. Nothing to report on the Sarah Brown case. Just on my way to a bed and breakfast in Three Wells Lane. Over and out. Marco! Now, who could that be? Well, whoever it is, I shan't stop what I'm doing. I intend to finish this by the end of the week. I've got that train set to repair. Policeman Kenneth making inquiries about a, a missing person. Afternoon, sir. Sorry to disturb you. Well, I never. What a coincidence. If I didn't only last week buy an old doll's house for my little girl. Oh. <laughs> Incredible. Almost identical. Ah, but I see you've bought it fully equipped. Oh, no. I made the furniture myself. It's a hobby. Would you like to see how I've wallpapered the inside? The gentleman wants to ask questions about a missing person, Kenneth. Oh, that can wait. Expect she's curled up somewhere with her lover. That is beautiful. Wish I had your talent, sir. He was nice. I could tell he meant it when he said my chocolate cake was the best he'd ever tasted. It's a pity we shan't see him again. Oh, we'll be seeing him. What? And not that he'll come in search of Sarah. He told me in confidence, Mummy, so you mustn't repeat this. He said the police have more than one eyewitness who saw a man talking to Sarah on that hard shoulder. No description, though. I don't expect they'll catch up with him. But what if he should come forward? <laughs> now, honestly, Mummy, is that likely? People these days, they've got no time for helping others. No. It's a cold-hearted race out there. I said I'd make him a few bits to go in his little girl's doll's house. Oh, I am pleased. You know, he's just the sort of man I imagine our daughter would have married. And you got on so well with him, Daddy. I do hope he does come back. In Wishing Well by Sally Warboys, Grace was played by Rosemary Leach, Kenneth by Norman Bird and Sarah by Kate Buffery. The Policeman was played by Robert Portal and The Man by Alan Barker. It was produced by Cherry Cookson.